Okay, we start again for the wrap up. We go back to our big overview of Timo and we reach the final uh, part, the SAR model, uh, which we talked about this morning. And in Morton's presentation, we focus specifically on people and rewards, but he also talked a lot about strategy. So we would like to start a wrap up again by asking you, what did you, where did you see the connection between the theory and the presentation we had? And we just talk to our neighbor for two minutes, and then we talk about what was the connection between the theory and the practice. Go. Okay, anyone wants the mic? Yes. Um, he, he, they had these uh, financial rewards which came from the strategy that mm -hmm. uh, do channel challenge and one more. Uh, uh, Listen, challenge and transform. Yes, yeah. uh, which came from the strategy, and mm -hmm. that was every time someone did something good, there was a reward, a financial reward, mm -hmm. and also in this feedback system, which uh, uh, also was some kind of reward. You know, it, you you did good, and mm -hmm. that's also kind of part of the structure, I guess, that you and control. Yes from the process, yeah. I guess. So there is a quite tight link between the strategy and what they're doing in terms of both people and rewards. Um, so when it comes to rewards, then they have the monetary rewards, which are quite apparent and very structured in their calculations. Um, and then they have the non-monetary rewards. So they have an ongoing process to empower people and encourage them to innovate and do better and develop themselves over time. Yes. Um, anything else? The guys behind you were talking, so you can just pass them the mic. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually it was directed to you, but. <laughs> Come on. No, I actually it was the same thing she said. Like. <laughs> okay. I mean, we just pass it to someone. Anything else? What about the connection between the, the strategy and the, the people? And what about the no monetary rewards? There was also in the, in the questions that, uh, that were asked at the end, 
um, there was also something about what happens in terms of rewards and people management when you have um, a bad management and then it's not so good or when you have when everything is going good on the low and the middle management and it's not so good on the top management um, and he replied that it's it's actually aligned so usually that doesn't happen uh, and one thing that uh, that I've seen uh, also in other companies is that one thing that could happen is that in the short term you have this very good performance and it looks good because the middle and the low uh, levels are doing well. Um, in the long term it will show if the, if the top management keeps being that bad. And one thing that you will see probably in the short term is that people start leaving and they start going outside. They start going to other companies and probably your competitors. And then if the people are leaving, Unless you have such a good middle management and such a good HR management that they're very quick in training and uh, the new people and hiring new people at a very fast pace, uh, then it will show in the long term uh, on the other levels as well. Because all your middle management will leave because their bosses were not good enough. Yes? They also had this program where they... Um uh, where they went to universities at different kinds. They also had these... Uh, uh, student jobs, mm -hmm. uh, interns like that, to 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 raise awareness mm -hmm. and 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 be where these future uh, employees come from. Exactly. So, if you look at the strategy as you mentioned, they want to listen, challenge, transform, and they want to engage. They want to excel. They want to aspire. And to do that, they have the monetary rewards, as we talked about, and then they have a quite strategic people management system, where, as you said, they go out and try to hire the best people out there, and then they train them in development. And one thing that he said was that they actually um, have a goal to have more internal people in the top management position, meaning that they are aiming to keep people inside the organization and not having them leave. And to do that, it's not just the monetary rewards, but they need to make sure that these people develop and grow and are happy enough to, to, to stay um, within the organization. And also compare, just one second, also related to that, when you compare, uh, there was something about comparing with competitors, and he said it's not legal. Um, it's not legal to make a, a deal with the competitors where you say, okay, we set the salary level at this uh, at this point for all our employees, so we all aligned. But what happens is that usually, of course, you more or less monitor what's going on in the market and you adjust the prices and then the market does its job so that the, the line is more or less aligned. Because of course, as he said, if you can see that everybody is leaving to go to Oticon, then maybe Oticon pays better salaries. And then they adjust uh, and the line goes up and then suddenly the other competitor does the same. So it's not that they are making plans, but they are more or less adjusting uh, each other comparing to the market. And you had something else? Yeah. They, they also had this uh, performance potential matrix mm -hmm. to, to keep people in the company and see, if, well, if they are high and perform well, can, can we challenge them so, so they get some kind mm -hmm. of... Uh, mastery uh, yep. uh, reward mm -hmm. um. yes and they and I think what was also interesting was that they said you need to have a constant uh, communication with your employees so you know what they want so it's not just about how you think your employees should develop but it's also what they want do they want to become a specialist or do they want to become a manager um, and also another thing uh, related to this is that they don't just increase the salaries but they anchor that to the market so that they're paying the right amount of salaries because as we could see from your feedback money is not everything and there are many other things that are important and if you're paying people too much uh, in the sense that you're paying them well they're probably very happy but that does not increase the performance it means that you're actually losing money in a way because you're paying people uh, a lot to do a job that they would do for less so you need to be careful how much do I need to give them a bonus or how much do I increase the salary to the point where it's a motivation and it doesn't become, um, it doesn't become something that is normal.
doesn't become a commodity. In your book, you have this uh, theory about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation uh, and the hygienic motivation as well, where you have certain things that at a certain point you start taking for granted. So right now it's very popular to have nice offices with a nice cafe and, and so on. And 10 years ago, if you put in a super fancy cafe, uh, then that would be uh, a motivational factor because it would be, oh, I can go down and get a, very, uh, get a very good coffee in my break and be in a good environment and feel like I'm not actually working. Um, now that all companies have that, or a lot of companies have that, for many people, uh, that is a commodity, that is something that doesn't give you any extra motivation because it's there. And if it's not there, you're actually bothered by it because why do I get bad coffee all the time? Everybody else gets to drink good coffee. So it's the same with the pay. You need to be careful uh, which level is the right one to motivate people and to not waste money, so to keep the uh, efficiency and the level of performance that we want. Yes? Something else? No, it's just, it, it was interesting for me that they, this, the talk was so much focused on, on financial rewards. And since they don't want to be market leading and give high salaries, then there must be something else. He didn't talk about losing talent. They seem to have talent. They've been on a growth path for many years. So, so they could easily afford giving extra rewards for people, but they don't do that. They have this nice matrix where it's, it's, it's just above uh, on market or perhaps a bit above. So there's something else going on in this company that's working well. You get the impression from his speech that it's so structured and everyone's doing the right thing. But I think as an engineer, there must be some other rewards. It must be doing some fun stuff or some interesting technologies. There must be something else and perhaps learning a lot because they develop. They perhaps get some time to, to tinker with their own stuff. So it's not just a, uh, about the rewards. And by the way, he, he likes financial rewards, but the research on financial rewards does not say that it's, it's, there's clear evidence that companies that use bonus systems or financial rewards are better performing than other companies. The only thing the literature is very clear on is that if you have performance management systems, you control your company in a given direction and you're very good at controlling that direction. It does not say it's the right direction. Other companies that does not have tight performance management systems are not significantly worse at performing at market level, taking at stock value. There's a question down there first. Sorry? You just mentioned okay. I just read your mind. Thank you. <laughs> there is one here. In the meanwhile, if you're interested on the Prezi, right here, uh, there is a video on what motivates knowledge workers and about the fact that different type of people get, different, that get a kick from different motivation and different tasks uh, in, increase performance based on different uh, motivations. So in some jobs, for some people, higher pay or a bonus or money or monetary incentive actually works, but not in all uh, cases. Yes? Do you perhaps elaborate a li little bit on this topic? I mean, it seems strange that if the, if the science points towards that the monetary rewards doesn't necessarily work in a type of company like this, and GN store orders is, is big and have been for the past 17 quarters, as they said, on a growth rate, uh, how come can they ignore this uh, system and how why does why does so many so many companies even though Nordisk which is probably one of the biggest and greatest and most innovative companies in Denmark how come do they not just ignore this uh, uh, bonus system thing I, I have no we, we, we don't know why companies go for performance management there is some sort of control logic that when you go up in 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 the hierarchy in a company you like to exert control and you want to make sure, because you're responsible and accountable for the company, that the company goes in the direction that you set. And if you have performance management or financial incentives, you're pretty sure that if you say, we're going to increase bonus on sales, then sales is going to go up. Perhaps you're going to sell a lot of stuff where you don't make money, so <laughs> your profit's going to go down. That's, that's a, a side effect. But the company management want to maintain that control. And even though you, you come and argue that, well, if you give people autonomy, you give them mastery, you give them a purpose, they will probably align somewhere with the company and, and give you good products. It's a leap of faith. And management usually don't like or buy into the leap of faith. There are some companies that are also big companies like Google and other software companies that have realized that perhaps financial incentives are not good enough. We, we should just give our engineers 10% time to tinkle with their own stuff. And, and 
just do what you want and, and suddenly new products, new ideas, new stuff, all this stuff that comes up, it's not part of the strategy. It's not part of the performance management system and it's not part of the incentive structure at all. No one even thought about this, but people just, well, it, it might fit in and some of this turns into products. But it's a completely different management philosophy and there is a tension in the literature. What should you do? Some argue we need control. Some argue, well, set them free. So it's two different systems and, and companies with both systems thrive in the same markets. And then it's also a market thing. So if all other companies in the world offer a bonus system uh, and one company says, you know what, there is research that says it doesn't work, so we just, we don't offer a bonus. Good luck finding people <laughs> for your company because it's not about, uh, you go back to the fact that some things are just expected. So you're expected to have a certain bonus system because everybody else has a bonus system. In academia, at least in Denmark, I don't know about abroad, uh, we have bonuses, but not very much. <laughs> well, in theory, we have a bonus system that you can apply for every year. In practice, I think this year they can give it out, I don't know, to two or three people in the whole department and the bonus is 0.2% or something. Very, very, very low numbers. So I don't consider that as a bonus system uh, that actually, you know... But, but tradition and culture work. is a huge part. If you go into sales, Insurance sales guys or whatever sales guys, they expect to get some sort of fee or some sort of percentage of the sale. If you go into administration, you don't expect to get a fee of the sale. And if you have a chain where you get uh, customers um, in, in, are coming in through a funnel, they get processed, and you have an insurance sales guy in the end. So what is the incentives for the last guy talking to this client? Oh, sorry to give it all, uh, all the way to the financial or to, to the insurance sales guy. Here you have a personal incentive and you have a group incentive. Why should I give someone or something a benefit to someone if I don't benefit yourself? So it's very easy to drive a, a wedge into your organization if you have a performance management system which incentivizes the in individual behavior. Mm. And I don't really approve of that. And I don't see evidence that it's working. Yeah, and if you don't expect it, then it's, it doesn't, it's not an incentive. I don't, I don't think we work because we are trying to get our bonus next year. Um, because it's not such a big thing for us. We work because we're motivated, we work because we're passionate about it, and because we like what we're doing and we have, we have a lot of intrinsic motivation. And we have a system that supports the way we work uh, in the way that we expect it. So if you look at the models in the book, it's, it's matching um, the ambition and the motivation and so on with the performance. So it's not about the money. But we are in an industry where the, the monetary bonus is not that, uh, that important. If I was a consultant or if I was a business developer in a big company and suddenly my company stopped giving out bonuses, maybe I would consider going to another one. Uh, to get the bonus as well, because why shouldn't I? Why should I be the only one that doesn't get it? Also, yeah. I'm not convinced that uh, the G and Storno is is know the real effect of their bonus system or their management system yet. The, he mentioned that there was a kickoff last year, so this has been a, in existence a year, so they probably haven't seen the full effect. So someone is sitting in the organization, starting to feel the pressure. What do they do? I'm getting measured on this. I'm really good at the technical stuff. Now you want me to listen and be engaging and whatnot, but I'm do good at programming. Mm -hmm. Am I being evaluated as uh, being poor performer or do I not have potential? There's a lot of, of, of uh, gray areas to this, which could be quite interesting to dig into. And, and one thing about the intrinsic motivation and the other factors rather than the monetary rewards is that he said that they pay for performance and they promote for rewards and they're working on their leadership skills. So they're actually trying to train their managers to be able to recognize what are the other elements of intrinsic motivation so that you can support the development of your employees throughout the organization. So they ha they're having programs that are specifically dedicated to making their employees work and helping their management supporting the, the growth uh, of the employees. So they're trying to change the culture. So if you go back to the model with the artifacts and the values at the bottom, they're trying to go to that point where they're changing the culture where everybody thinks, okay, we need to support our, um, our employees and we need to be good leaders and good managers. And they're using different tools to achieve that, um, that goal. 
with the final aim of growing a winning organization, which is part of the strategy. So they are considering uh, very strongly the connection between the strategy and the people and the rewards. And what he didn't talk about today, but what we talked about yesterday with Morden was that they are also looking at processes and structures. So they're actually combining the different things together. Um, because it's, if they had a structure like this in a very flat, non-hierarchical organization where all other processes are informal, people would freak out because it, it wouldn't be aligned with the way they are used of working. Um, they have put in a structured system in a system that is already structured so people understand and can actually make it work together and they are f matching it to the type of processes that they have within the organization. So again, alignment. Do you have something else? Are there any final questions? No? Okay, then uh, we thank you for today and uh, next week we will have a big wrap up uh, and then four of our TAs will present some of the cases. So it's a good opportunity for you to go through the case analysis again and see how uh, it can be made. Um, one thing that we and then we will do a briefing on the multiple choice test. Uh, one thing that we would like to ask you is this afternoon, try to think if there are any models or theories or aspects uh, of what we have done so far or of the curriculum that are not so clear to you and talk to your TAs about it. We will collect those topics and try to focus on them more during next week's wrap up. So if you have any doubts, it's a good idea to point them out today so that we can discuss them again next week. Thank you. Thank you.